next talk is a rank one, is on a rank one sketch for ma matrix multiplicative weights. And Yair Karman will give the talk. Hello, everyone. So we're going to follow up on the theme of getting rid of those pesky SVDs. This is joint work with uh, John Ducci, Aaron Sidford, and Kevin Tian. And the problem that we'll consider today is a matrix analog of the very fundamental problem of online learning on the simplex. Um, applications for our matrix extension include online PCA and semi-definite programming. So like in every online learning problem, we play a game in stages and at stage XT, we take an action, at stage T, we take an action XT, which is a matrix, a symmetric matrix. And this matrix is in a set called the spectrohedron, which is a set of positive semi-definite matrices with trace one. And this is the natural matrix analog of the simplex, because if you think about the eigenvalues of a matrix in the spectrohedron, um, it's positive and it sums to one, so it's exactly on the simplex. Um, and an adversary is also going to give us a symmetric matrix. We're going to call it GT or the game, and it's going to be on the spectral box. So the eigenvalues of GT will be inside the box. And we earn a reward, which is the inner product between the game that we got and the action that we played. And as always, our goal is to minimize the regret. So we want to uh, make sure that the difference between the best single action chosen in hindsight and all of the rewards that we got is not too large. And because it's the spectrator and we have a closed form for that supremum over X star, it's just the maximum eigenvalue of all of the gains that we've seen. And if you give me an algorithm that makes the regret small, it immediately implies an algorithm for online PCA, and it implies an algorithm for semi-definite programming. Um, so one algorithm that makes the regret small is called matrix multiplicative weights, also known by matrix exponential gradient and spectrohedron mirror descent. And it's the direct matrix analog of standard multiplicative weights. So we will sum up all of the gains we've seen so far, we'll multiply them by a step size, then we'll exponentiate. If we were exponentiating a vector, now it would be a positive vector, since we're exponentiating a matrix, it's going to be a positive matrix, so we're going to normalize it to have unit trace by dividing by the trace. Um, the bad news is that unlike exponentiating a vector that costs time O of n, exponentiating a matrix costs time O of n cubed, exactly because we need to do this eigen decomposition in order to exponentiate a matrix. And this is the problem that we want to solve here. We want to have cheaper steps than this. Um, <clears throat> but let's first say what's good about um, matrix multiplicative weights, and what's good is the regret. So for any adversary whatsoever, we get the same regret guarantee that we get for multiplicative weights, uh, and it's optimal up to constant. This means that if we look at the total computational cost to make the average regret less than epsilon, uh, it's going to scale as one over epsilon squared, but also uh, scaling with n cubed, which is what we want to solve. So now let's describe uh, the sketch that we propose. So one way to think about our sketch is it's a, essentially a rank one uh, JL sketch. It means that we start by sampling a Gaussian vector UT, and then we take this Gaussian vector UT, and we multiply it by the same exponential matrix for multiplicative weights, and then we take the rank one matrix formed by the result, the result we call it VT, and our action is XT. So in terms of computational complexity, the big win here is that we don't have to exponentiate a full matrix anymore. We don't just have to compute the product of a matrix exponential and a vector. And we can do this efficiently with the Langshus method by just a small amount of standard matrix vector products. So this will never take much more than n squared. And it can be much less than n squared if the matrix has structure. And additionally, the actions that we play have rank one, which means they're much cheaper to store. But it's also a complication because we don't really have a hope anymore of competing against an ad arbitrary adversary because that adversary can choose a gain orthogonal to the XT that we played and then we will have very high regret. So we add an assumption. We assume that the adversary chooses the gain simultaneously with us choosing the action XT or more formally that condition on all the past, um, the gain is independent of XT. Uh, another way to look at it is just saying that this randomness we use to create UT is private to us and the adversary doesn't see it. Um, so this is a fairly weak assumption. It's weaker than an oblivious adversary, for example. And under this assumption, what we are able to show is exactly the same regret guarantee of matrix multiplicative weights, but on expectation and with slightly larger constants. On top of that, we are able to show high probability regret guarantees and also a relative regret bound like there is for multiplicative weights. Um, so the bottom line is that now the overall computational complexity to get epsilon average regret 
scales with epsilon a little bit higher because of the Langshus iterations, but it scales with n squared instead of n cubed. So when n is large, this is certainly a computational win, and remember that actually we are going from eigen decomposition to matrix vector products, and when the problem has structure, matrix vector products will often be much cheaper. <coughs> so this is all our results in one slide. Um, now, let me mention that previous work also works on reducing the complexity of matrix multiplicative weights. Unfortunately, I don't have time to go through them one by one. I'll just mention that compared to the best previous results, we improved the complexity by a factor of log n to the power of five, um, and that our aggregate guarantees are optimal up to constant. We also have um, a few new uh, analysis techniques that I would like to share a little bit. So really the key for our analysis is to take the dual averaging point of view of online learning. And from a dual averaging perspective, the only thing that defines a procedure is how you map from the space of linear combinations of gains into the space of actions. So in our case, gains live in symmetric matrices and actions live on the spectroidon. And what matrix multiplicative weight does is map them through this uh, mirror projection, which is the exponential divided by the trace. Now you can just view our sketch as taking this projection and replacing it with something else, but something that is random. So for every vector u, we'll have a different mirror projection pu that maps from symmetric matrices to the simplex, and then we're going to pick a random Gaussian u. And now an important observation is that since we just want to sum the expectation of the rewards, which are inner products, it's actually enough to look at where do these uh, randomized mirror projections take you to on average. However, there is a challenge because the point that they take you to on average is not the matrix multiplicative weights projection. So what we do is we just define a new mirror projection function, a deterministic function p bar, which by definition is the average point uh, that our sketch takes you to. And now what we're going to show is this is a perfectly good mirror projection to do dual averaging with in the sense that the actions x bar generated by these projections also have um, a very good regret guarantee. And since our xt is an unbiased estimator for x bar, we immediately get the same regret guarantees for xt, which is what we want. <coughs> so what do we need to do in order to show that a p bar is a good mirror projection? It turns out we actually need to show very little. We need to find a little p bar, which is uh, such that p bar is its gradient, and then we define a Bregman divergence. And then we show three geometric properties of the, <coughs> of the Bregman divergence and p bar. So first of all, smoothness, which you can think about as p bar being Lipschitz continuous or little p being smooth, or the divergence being bounded by a uh, square norm. And then a diameter bound, which is similar to the range bound from follow the regularized leader. And then um, surjectivity. So you can get to every point in the interior of the simplex by mapping some symmetric matrix with p bar. Only these three um, properties are enough to show uh, the regret guarantee that we want. So if you play actions x bar, you get exactly the same regret guarantee that we claimed in the beginning. And now xt, since it's unbiased for x bar, immediately gets the same regret guarantees on expectation. Um, and we think this idea might generalize to other settings where you have a set that is expensive to project to, like positive semi-definite matrices, and you have an idea for like a cheap random thing you could do in order to do this projection. So one framework of looking at it is just define the average projection and analyze it. Now, I would like to point out that the average projection is as expensive to compute as matrix multiplicative weights, maybe even more, but we have a cheap unbiased estimate for it. So how we show these geometrical properties, unfortunately, I won't have time to go into. The short answer is spectral function analysis, and it allows us to basically tie together matrix multiplicative weights and our sketch that we created, and this way kind of piggyback of all of the nice properties of matrix multiplicative weights. Um, so to summarize, uh, we found a cheaper way to do matrix multiplicative weights. We, added, we, have to, we had to add an assumption about the adversary, but even with this assumption, it's applicable to online PCA and semi-definite programming. Um, however, other applications like online convex optimization will be limited by our assumption. Nonetheless, we think that um, this technique might be helpful in other settings as well. So you're welcome to the poster. There's also the paper on archive. Thank you.
Yeah, so that's a good question. So um, you, for matrix multiplicative weights, both kind of approaches are the same. Um, for our randomized thing, it's not clear if like a, like you could, you could take our p bar, right? And or little p bar, do the dual and do a, follow the regular as leader with it, theoretically. It might be a different procedure and you won't necessarily have an unbiased estimator for that. Um, yeah, so that's an excellent question about the variance. So kind of the magic is that all of the variance get eaten up in the other term for the regret, like stochastic gradient descent. Um, the variance is at most one because the size of the spectrohedron is one. Um, other than that, I don't have much to say about the variance. Let's thank the speaker again.